how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Smash Mouth Sports, brought to you by DocSports.com. He's Doug Upstone. I'm Scott Spritzer. It is our college basketball weekend preview. We'll be here each and every week uh, right through March Madness. I'm looking forward to getting into the conference tournaments in another month. But right now, we got five big marquee matchups going this weekend, Friday and Saturday. We're going to get to those in just a moment. I want to remind everybody, if you're not yet a member at DocSports.com and just want to give it a trial run, it's a real cool way to do it. You click on the link below the video, get yourself set up for a free $60 account, and then you can use those free 60 bucks on any of our daily packages, Doug's, mine, anybody in the roster over at DocSports.com. Uh, we're going to jump into college basketball's weekend videos in a second, but I wanted to let everybody know that Doug Upstone and myself will be also posting a video by Thursday night. We're going to be talking Super Bowl money management. So be sure to check that out. Give you some ins and some outs and some things not to do and things to do uh, that we recommend when it comes to Super Bowl betting. So you can certainly check that out. Uh, Doug, we're going to jump into college baskets in a moment. But what is the plan for Doug Upstone this weekend at DocSports.com? Yeah, th this weekend, Scott, I'm going to try and keep it rolling. Now, I know that you have been doing great, but, you know, for both Scott and myself, actually, our goal each and every week is to attack the sports books and make them as angry as uh, Leon Cooperman, the billionaire hedge, tra uh, billionaire hedge trader, is right today on Thursday. So that's our goal. We want to make the sports books that angry. So that's that's our plan. And... Uh, I've won myself seven of the last nine days in college basketball. Uh, my top play in four of those days, in fact, the last four days, I've hit them all. And I know, Scott, you have been rolling in college basketball. It's been real nice. I mean, we've had a top play sweep this week, college and NBA with the top plays. And uh, after Wednesday night's seven-star uh, winner, we're now up over 6,100 on the season for those wagering $100 per unit. So we'll look to keep it going. And I expect to have at least three college basketball plays on Saturday. It's a big enough card when we'll get at least that. We swept last Saturday, hence wearing the same shirt on video for the third straight week. I am one of those guys who believes in, you know, you don't mess with the streak, as F.B. Calvin Nuke Lelouch once said, right? So anyway, let's get to the matchup between Iowa and Illinois. Big Ten play on Friday. Uh, Hawkeyes had that five-game winning streak snapped done by Indiana last time out at Carver Hawkeye Arena, no less. And, you know, they just looked out of sync, Doug. It's a strong shooting team, Iowa, uh, when it comes to both the two-pointer and the three-pointer, but they were just off their game against the Hoosiers. Yeah, it, it was really a weird game to watch because they just, I mean, we haven't seen any game yet that was even close to how they played like that and just uh, seemed to really lack energy as much as anything that that's and whether that was all on Indiana you know it's hard to say and in th this one though we got two of the most uh, two of the, I should say two of the best offensive efficiency teams in the country uh, Illinois is number 12 Iowa is number 3 so we got a, a lot going there now the Illini I have a little bit of a worry with them coming this game and I, I think I finally put my finger on it you know I've just wondered what's been wrong with this team and, and I know it's a popular term but they're just not connected Okay, and there's too many guys kind of I'm not saying interested in just their own agenda, but they're they're not great teammates. And whereas when you watch Iowa play, boy, those guys, you know, they play for each other and they play hard for each other. So in this one, I, I'm inclined to think that Iowa can get the job done on the road uh, at Champaign this week. Yeah, I'm with you. Listen, spot plays have been outstanding in college basketball this year more than than normal. And uh, I'm with you. I, I power rate, as far as the power rate is concerned, I make Iowa a couple of points better than Illinois in this game. But boy, when they get on a tear, they can shoot lights out. They get on a roll. They're tough to beat. And uh, of course, they're coming off the tough loss, which puts them in a nice spot for this particular game. The rest of the card are all Saturday games. We start out with a very interesting SEC Big 12 clash. Alabama at Oklahoma. Can't wait to watch this one. And Doug, we're talking 10 straight wins now for the Tide. <laughs> And Nick Saban has nothing to do with it, believe it or not. Uh, they managed to slip up against Kentucky, or managed not to slip, I should, slip up, I should say, against Kentucky. Uh, but both Bama and Oklahoma, when you're handicapping these two teams, they have strong adjusted efficiency numbers. But, man, I just wonder, Doug, can OU keep it up after big conference wins over Kansas and Texas? Yeah, you know, Scott, 
you know, I've watched, I've really watched Alabama closely. And the thing I've noticed, especially in the last two games where they had more difficult, I mean, you know, for, they won that stretch for a while. I think, I think we talked about they're winning by like 19 points a game in the SEC. And then they, you know, they, they struggled with Mississippi State, which, you know, was not, you know, I mean, you're not going to play great every single game. But then against Kentucky, you know, not to say Kentucky doesn't have talent. The record, you know, is, there's no comparison in the record versus the talent that they have. However, they seem a little bored uh, and a little, you know, have that visibly, you know, that uh, blank look. And yeah. they seem to have that in both those games. And I, my thought was, is that I wonder if they're not just going up and down the floor, stealing the ball, running the break, dunking the ball, taking threes, if they just you know, lose a little interest. And if if I'm possibly right, uh, I'm not saying I am, but if I'm possibly right, well, Lon Cougar's a lot smarter than me about basketball. So he'll, he'll know that, you know, going in the game and certainly trying to play that way. Still, when it comes down to it though, Scott, you know, I, I agree with you. I wonder about the Sooners, what they'll continue to have. And then Oklahoma just, I mean, sorry, Alabama just has that one extra gear late in games, especially in the last two, where they went, you know, on those 6-0 runs, created some distance, put it away. I think the same thing is going to happen again this week. Yeah, and I think Oklahoma, again, they had some big fish to fry in conference play, and they beat both of those teams, the Jayhawks and the Longhorns. I actually make Bama about a two-and-a-half-point road power-rated favorite at Lloyd Noble Arena over Oklahoma in this one. Again, not a line, but a power rating. And uh, worst thing that ever happened to UNLV basketball was losing Lon Kruger over the last 25 years. That was their worst move. Let him get away for an extra million a year. Not only a, a fantastic coach, as you mentioned, the brains on this guy and what he's done every stop he's made along the way, but just a fantastic guy in the community. I didn't know him personally, but we did a radio show once together uh, for a charity, and he's just a great guy. Uh, let's get to uh, some more Big 12 SEC action. Listen, I'm looking forward to this one, too. Texas Tech and LSU. I'll tell you right now, Doug, the other night I had a six-star play on LSU over Texas A&M. And for those who weren't involved or didn't see the game, LSU was laying five. Uh, they were up big, pretty big, nine, ten-point lead. Then they fell apart. So they're down 66 to 60 with just a few minutes to go in the game. Down six, laying five on the road. They closed the game on an 18-0 run to get us the victory 12-point win, easy cover. I'd love to say that I had it handicapped that way, Doug Upstone, but I'll take it anyway, even though I didn't. But I'm really looking forward to Texas Tech and LSU and the Red Raiders that'll chip on the shoulder after blowing one against West Virginia. Yeah, yeah, Scott. The, you know, Texas Tech, I mean, the, the, this is really, the, the contrast here is, is really unique to me. I mean, you have a very physical, rough and tough team, you know, uh, the team plays like they're from West Texas. Let's put it that way. You know, I mean, they're yeah. playing like some cowboys out there and they're, and they're rough guys. And LSU has, just to say, not completely superior, but, you know, somewhat superior athletes here. So it kind of comes down to, you know, what you think and how that can certainly play out. Now, Texas Tech, you know, uh, when, uh, two and one against, you know, Baylor, uh, two and one against spread against Texas, Baylor and, and West Virginia uh, against the spread. That That's awfully good. The teams, the, the, the really best part of this matchup, uh, number 10, def, uh, excuse me, offense efficiency for LSU, number 11 defense for Texas Tech. So I think those two could kind of cancel each other. What I'm really, what I think the difference is in the game is going to be, though, the efficiency of the Red Raiders offense versus the LSU defense. I'm, I'm thinking that uh, Texas Tech is going to be one to three, okay, range as far as an underdog. I'll take the point, Scott. What do you think? Well, Chris Beard has done a oh boy speaking. You know, here we go back to UNLV again. Common theme. I wasn't even thinking about thinking about it at all when we were uh, setting up these games. But Chris Beard was in uh, Vegas for about a week, had a cup of coffee or two, was about to take over the program. And I listen, I'm showing my true colors here. I've lived in Vegas since 84. I was 17 when I moved here. Big run and rubble fan since day one. Of course, Tark was here back in those days, and it was an event to go to those games. Very disappointed that Beard didn't stick around for more than a week. Uh, he got that job offer at Texas Tech, and there he went. And now he's got this team as a perennial top 10 basketball program. Uh, you know, his crew, as you mentioned, they're great on defense. They're 23rd on the offensive end in that same important category of adjusted efficiency. They're off that blown loss against West Virginia. That scares me a little bit here uh, if you're back in LSU, not you in particular, but in general. And uh, so anyway, I, I got a feeling this might be a play this weekend for me, but we, we got another day to decide on that. We'll see where the spread is when it comes out. 
on Friday afternoon. Uh, Villanova at Seton Hall. Doug, I'm watching the game the other night, Seton Hall hosting Creighton. I came this close to jumping on Seton Hall in revenge. Now, Creighton's my hometown team. It's where I grew up, about a 10-minute drive from the Blue Jay campus. And so I was a big Blue Jay fan, but I know when you kind of want to jump in with this team under Greg McDermott, when you want to stay off the game. And they blew out Seton Hall a couple of weeks ago by about 30 points. And I, I was just so tempted to back Seton Hall after that bad loss and get their revenge. And at the last second, I decided to hold off. I was really not happy with myself for 30 of the 40 minutes of the game that I held off and then was very happy at the end. And what happened was a Seton Hall had a 16 point lead with about 10 minutes to go in the second half. And Greg McDermott went from his normal type of defense to 100% zone. And that was it. Seton Hall could not figure out the zone and it was game over. Creighton goes on the big run, wins the game by four, covers the spread. And I just don't know, Doug, how Seton Hall recovers from that, even though you've got a big game against Nova coming up this weekend. Scott, you 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 literally took the words out of my mouth. I mean, because <laughs> when I was watching that game uh, and I was thinking that, you know what, this is going to be a really good spot for Seton Hall. You know, I mean, they're, you know, they, they had what they lost by two at Villanova nine days ago or thereabouts uh, as nine point underdogs. They're going to be home. They're going to be fresh from that. They're going to be off a big victory over Creighton. And uh, <laughs> then that happens, you know, and like you said, they completely fell apart. I just don't, you know, if it was a week between games, maybe I just can't see it. I think Villanova, uh, it's, in fact, what it reminds me of the Arizona, Arizona state game uh, the other day, you know, they had played, I think they played in this case, like three or four days apart. Uh, Arizona state, you know, had the game one, lost at the buzzer, came out, Arizona blitzed them 10, nothing. And that was the game. Okay. Yeah. The same thing I could see happening here. I take Nova in this one. Yeah, such a tough game the other night to lose for the Hall. And, you know, it's funny. I was watching Steve Lavin post-game uh, wrap-up of the game on uh, FS1. And, you know, he, he was praising Doug McDermott. He goes, the one thing I like about McDermott is he will change things up if something's not working. He's not stuck to that original game plan. And as he said, and I love the phrase, I've used it a few times, uh, but, you know, when you get a hunch, bet a bunch. You know, that's what Levin, Levin basically described McDermott. Get a hunch, bet a bunch. He got a hunch. He went to that zone, and that was that for Seton Hall. And I would expect to see any team that's struggling a little bit against the Hall on the defensive end drop into a zone if they've been practicing it after watching that game film of the uh, Blue Jays' comeback the other night. Final game is another big one, Big 12 SEC, Kansas at Tennessee. And despite Kansas not being the team that we normally see under Bill Self, they're still 22nd and 18th on adjusted efficiency on the offensive end and the defensive end, respectively. But here's the thing, Doug, that I've seen this year. If you can't defend the two-point shot well, you can give the Jayhawks some problems, and Tennessee is top 40 defending the two. Yeah, you know, the this is a, you know, I, to be perfectly honest, I'm surprised this is even, I mean, I know, I know the program's nature, but this featured of a game. Uh, I would rather see Alabama and Oklahoma later than this one. I don't really like either team, to tell you the truth, in, in watching both. I think, you know, the, I think the sanctions or the, you know, reported sanctions against Kansas has taken a hit on their recruiting. I don't see the same quality of players that we've seen, you know, the last, what, 12, 15 years under Bill Self. Sure. So I think that's a big deal. And, you know, when you listen to, you know, the TV types, they're, you know, they're always praising uh, Rick Barnes, okay? You know, all his teams play beautiful basketball. They do this, they do that, you know? But you, know, you look at Rick Barnes' resume, he's got one Final Four, which was 18 years ago with Texas, and he's been to four other Sweet 16s. I'm not saying the guy's not a good coach. I don't think he's an elite coach, and I don't think he's an elite recruiter anymore, certainly. And I just don't think – you watch Tennessee. I mean, are, are, to you, Scott, are they any more than a, you know, a tw let's just say 30 to 45, you know, in terms of rankings? I don't see it here. What I do see, though, or what I should say, what I, what I, what I, a couple things. I don't see Kansas losing four in a row, and I do see Tennessee ending the month one and seven against the spread. I'll take the Jayhawks, but, boy, that is only a lean. Yeah, it's a good spot play, but doesn't mean you have to play spot plays, right, on the Jayhawks. And uh, so it's a lean for me also on Kansas here. Um, you know, we're seeing it, Doug. We're seeing it from Calipari, Coach K. 
and to a, I guess, a certain level, Bill Self. We're seeing teams that have one and done approaches with their players or two and done, two seasons and going to the NBA, who didn't get the big preseason buildup, the chance to develop chemistry among young players, the chance to go overseas in some cases and play for a month before coming back home and starting the season. And I think it has negatively affected those three programs, especially Duke and Kentucky. You got one and dones, you got to have time to develop some chemistry. And instead of being, being able to do that with whatever group gatherings and practice and all that before the season, they're having to do it during the season. So we're seeing a little bit of an effect there, I think. But uh, yeah, I'm with you. I lean on Kansas a little bit here too over Tennessee. And folks, don't forget that uh, Doug Upstone and I are going to be uh, doing a Super Bowl video, uh, which we're going to be talking about money management with the Super Bowl. There's you know some little ins and outs if you're doing this for more than just entertainment purposes uh, that you might want to jump in on or stay away from. So Doug and I are going to do a real quick video just to give you some thoughts on that coming up. And uh, on Tuesday, I'm going to be doing a video with Rafael Esparza. So check that out. We're going to be throwing some uh, props out there. And Doug, I think you're doing a video too, talking about some Super Bowl props in the next few days. Exactly. I'm also using the services of of, of Mr. Raphael. So we'll see what we can, we can do there. And uh, yeah, hey, just, you know what? Super Bowl is an entertaining time of year. Lots of, lot of things going on. But if, if you're just betting for entertainment purposes, which we'll talk about, that might not be good enough. <laughs> so yeah. stay tuned. We'll have some stuff for you that way. Check out all the weekend and daily uh, picks and plays and videos from Doug Upstone and myself and everybody over at DocSports.com. Don't forget, you can get that free $60 account if you're not yet a member. You just click on the link below the video to get started. You can use those free $60 bucks on any of Doug's or any of my daily packages or anybody on the roster at DocSports.com. It's going to wrap it up for our basketball weekend. Let's put him in the win column. He's Doug Upstone. I'm Scott Spreitzer. We are DocSports.com.